Well, good morning, Bill Bunting, 8306 Wagon Wheel Lane, Hudson, Florida. Madam Chairman, Commissioners, thank you for giving me a few minutes for this. I appreciate your time. But I certainly appreciate what Mr. Gallagher and, and Henry Wilson opened the door here. They thought outside the box, and uh, you'll see as I go on with my couple of minutes here how it uh, ties in. You guys have done a great job, and thank you, too. Okay. Uh, Pasco should join counties around the state in bringing natural gas here. It's cost effective, and gas prices are at record lows. When we talk about record lows, we're talking about national gas prices. They're at 10 year lows. Okay? A gallon of gasoline today in Pasco is 376, which I wrote yesterday, but when I passed the racetrack this morning, it was 385 in Hudson. So I guess it's up, up, and away with the gas prices. 375 in Dade City, so come on. Well, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll make me come over. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Okay. A gallon of gas, on, on the other hand, will cost us about $2 a gallon. Now, here's what's going on in the Bay Area, so you'll see how your counterparts are working with you. Uh, Clearwater Gas has already put its first gas station up and running, and they're using it, and it's, uh, it's working well down there, and it's cost-effective and saving in Pinellas. Uh, Hillsboro... Uh, has put one in Riverview, uh, Riverview, which is in Hillsborough County, and People Gas has put that. And just recently, uh, Tampa International Airport has uh, joined in and is already running vehicles and has their first natural gas station up. So uh, it's happening. It's happening all around us. Private carting companies around the state uh, have had their engines refitted, especially in Polk and Palm Beach counties uh, and elsewhere around the state. National carriers of freight in the U.S. are doing the same. By reducing the cost of uh, gas, private contractors stand to make more money. That's reasonable, and the more money they make, the more hiring they'll do. Okay? Counties benefit because gas can be purchased in a 10-year contract at record lows, which gives us stability, and you can work into your budget because we know that Oil prices may be $107 today, and four months from now, they may be $85 a gallon. But you're never going to have stability. You can't count on the Middle East. There's no question about that. And you'll be sending a message to our Mitterjohn, and that's for sure. And that, uh, that's something Americans should think about. OK? All right. Uh, natural glass is cleaner. Uh, you get a longer engine life. It provides jobs in America. It's an American product. In North America, we have enough to last us for 175 to 200 years, and uh, that's sustainable, so we can move ahead with that. <clears throat> and the more we move to our natural gas to get it into production and get it up and running, it's also going to drive down the cost of oil, drive down the cost of oil, drive down the cost of gas, okay? I left copies on your desk with just touching some articles. I didn't just start this yesterday. One of the articles I have on there is seven months ago from a statewide article from the Tampa Tribune around the state and previously did articles and did television shows on this, okay? The uh, one that I found interesting was the one in Leon County where by August 12th, all their buses for the school system will be running on natural gas. Really? I said to you, yep, it's in there. Okay. Okay, and uh, there's no question about that. They've been working on it for two years, so again, they were ahead of the game, and they found it to be cost-effective also. Okay, our school population here has leveled off, so the uh, school construction has leveled off, and I'm hoping that there may be money available in the remaining two years on a penny for Pasco tax, which could probably work its way in. Uh, also, I, I spoke to people in natural gas, and what they've done here, too, is for large buildings and schools or county buildings, whatever, natural gas can be provided for air conditioning now and drive the cost way down. So again, we've got another option that we can put on the table. Uh, with that, I'm going to say that uh, I'd like to see John Gallagher head a committee on this with Henry Wilson. We don't need a paid consultant on this because I'll, my comments will be directed at John Gallagher. In the early 70s in Newport Ritchie, he took the initiative to put propane vehicles and random as a city administrator for the city of Newport Ritchie, and he can explain that to you on his own. But I think he had a, had a good foresight. He had it up and running, and he's got the experience, so that eliminates the price of a consultant. Okay? 
So you have a new title now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Look, he's working real hard on us. So uh, with that, I think I'll think it'll open up the, to John Gallagher, Commissioner well, first Wilson. First of all, so are there any questions? We want to thank you for your efforts. Well, I want to thank them too. It's, this has no, been, a, this has been a, a, a group joint. effort. Right. But if are Mr. there any questions, if Mr. Commissioner? Bunting could, maybe you could provide us with copies of your comments, so we at least have that to, to reread through what you said. If I can, uh, you can, you can get them if I can bring them home to Dr. Bunting That's and fine. she can uh, edit them a little bit, because Commissioner Mulberry is a PhD in English, and I don't want to get criticized. Thank you. <laughs> We'd never do that. <laughs> Mr. Gallagher, question? do you have anything to say about this? No, we're still. This is a uh, issue. That Mr. Bunting said Mr. Wilson had been working on <clears throat> the stumbling block we most recently ran into <clears throat> was the school board yeah, basically school board. told us that they were not that interested <clears throat> because it wasn't that <clears throat> much of a savings. So <clears throat> that's an issue I think they continue to explore. Uh, we've had meetings with our haulers. Their haulers say that they, uh, in South Florida, uh, they've used it a lot, and they've found benefits and savings. So we're still going ahead with the process and exploring to see what options the county has. And, and, and just on another note, I mean, it, it's spreading out from, from where it is. I met with uh, Congressman Dennis Ross several months ago with the business community down in Tampa, and I mean some real heavyweights down there. And his suggestion was a good one, and, and I hope we can move forward on this. He said one, probably one of the best things we can do is and get the United Postal Service to re retrofit their engines, and that would be the largest carrier of vehicles in the United States, and I, and I think that's a good idea. And we also have the opportunity here with Congressman Bularakis, assuming we'll be reelected, and he's going to cover all of Pasco, so we're going to have our foot in the door to, with Bularakis so we can open talks with him, and we're blessed that we're going to have Will Weatherford here as the incoming Speaker of the House. So a combination of a good county commission, uh, Will Weatherford, who can really get things done, and open the door with Gus Bolarakis. I think we've got avenues that we haven't looked at, and I think they're important. It's important to the people in Pasco. I mean, we look at the veterans, and we see what they've done for this county. Some of them are dropping insurance. They don't have the money, and you see it. I see families. Uh, I contribute to St. Vincent de Paul, and I see the families that, that come in there. These people can't even put red meat on their table. And I just think it's a shame. And the price of gas is just crippling these people. So if there's something we can do as a group, I mean, we all can afford other things, but I think these people are the ones that have been here in Pasco, especially the veterans. They made this county for us. They really have. And I think we owe them. Madam Chair? Yes, Commissioner Chair. Mariano. Phil, did they, um, what, what school system was it that had um, switched the buses? over? Yeah. It's the whole county, Leon County. It's Leon. in Tallahassee, Jack. And I, I, reading in the article in the paper, I think it said the school board talked about the fuel economy. They weren't thrilled with what they were looking at getting. Yeah, well, uh, that's why – thank you, Jack, for raising that. And, and I think that's what's important with uh, Commissioner Wilson and John Gallagher, and I, I think you need uh, representatives there from the TECO people and Clearwater's Gas to come in because that's a flawed statement. I mean, uh, if all of our national carriers are taking up their freight and reducing their costs, getting almost twice the engine life and putting cleaner air out, I don't know where that statement comes from. So I think he would have to explain that before if you put together a committee, that would be a good place to put it on the table. Uh, maybe he read something or maybe he's mistaken. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. I, I think it's a good idea to set up the committee, take a look at the benefits, the costs. I do like the 10-year uh, lock-in contract of the price of fuel, which is good. Anything we can do to reduce our dependency on foreign oil is good. Yeah. But I would want to make sure that we're going to make the right steps with everything to make sure the right. numbers right. make sense. <coughs> Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Wilson. Mr. Bunting, thank you for talking this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time and your consideration, and, and I know you're going to – your due diligence will be on here in this one. Thank you well, again. Well, we thank you for being on the cutting edge. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, listen, if it's going to save taxpayers money, I'm there. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, well, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Steve Simon. I live in Land Lakes on 7349 Cleopatra Drive. I, uh, I sat and listened to, to Mr. Bunting, and I, and I, I listened with a, uh, with a raised eyebrow, uh, uh, first ironically because that was the gentleman that opposed the uh, sales tax issue uh, so strongly 
when I was on the commission, and now uh, he takes the role of the person who tells you what to do with it. Uh, uh, the next run, it, uh, things do change in, in PASCO. Uh, I would tell you this, that uh, uh, Mr. Skinner was talking about just MPG, just miles per gallon. If you sit there and you take a negative 400 percent workload, uh, uh, eight miles per gallon, as opposed to two miles per gallon, four times the differential, it doesn't make up for the twofold price savings per gallon. That's just one issue. The stumbling block that Mr. Skinner was talking about, conversions and stuff, even if you don't do conversions, even you, if you talk about a seamless integration of absorption into the fleet as vehicles come to the end of their life, there is a premium paid for these vehicles because of the small market share that they encapsulate, so much so that uh, the transportation director from the school board said that there might be as much as a $30,000 premium per school bus. You take a two-time the mile per gallon cost plus a $30,000 premium, someone would say that's enough to slow down. But if that isn't enough to slow you down, I have some more. In addition to that, the fleet maintenance people that have been working on the machines that have diesel engines or regular uh, gasoline internal combustion engines, they have no experience, they have no tools, they have no familiarity with the lines, with the ignition systems or the engine modifications necessary for the natural gas. You're talking about a whole new bell curve, a whole new learning curve for people just to learn how to maintain these things. It is very easy for someone to stand from a podium and tell you it's cleaner, it's better, it doubles the engine life. Well, I talked to a few diesel mechanics over the last couple of days, and one of them told me that the diesel engines have improved over the last seven years at, at, at a meteoric level. They're burning cleaner, they're getting better and better as we go along, and there's distribution and there's gas places for them now. We don't have to build gas centers for all of this. And I leave you with one thought. Did you know that the compressed gas, in order to fill the tanks on a tractor trailer, going through school in New York, I drove tractor trailers in the summers. It'd take about a half hour to fill up the two 500, 600 gallon tanks on each side. It's hours to do that with compressed gas. Remember that the sources of information that Mr. Bunting talked about, most of them were companies in the business of selling natural gas. I urge you to reconsider this and slow down a little.